Hello everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview as well as some benchmarks on this new graphics card from Asus. This is the Asus Mars 760 and it contains not one but two GeForce GTX 760 GPUs on the same PCB. This is also an ROG or Republic of Gamers card and uh, that specific logo and the black and red theme is generally reserved for some of the most high-end hardware that Asus produces when it comes to gaming PCs specifically. And uh, often it's a, a, an area that you'll find a lot of innovation, a lot of sort of different and new types of things that Asus likes to try out. So um, this is sort of a member of an elite group of ROG branded graphics cards. Mars is a moniker that ASUS uses for specially made ROG series NVIDIA cards. Um, there are also AMD cards that a ASUS also makes. Those are generally known as Ares cards. So there's a little bit of your naming history. Uh, dual GPU, of course. So GeForce GTX 760 is the GPU that's in there. There are two of them. And uh, the GTX 760 is based on the GK104 GPU, um, which is the same GPU that the uh, GTX 680 was based on, if you recall, um, from the 600 series. 600 series and 700 series are still based on the same uh, Kepler manufacturing architecture, so they bear a lot of similarities to each other. But the uh, 760 has six SMX units, uh, which gives you a total of 1,152 CUDA cores, as compared to the eight SMX units that was in the GK104 from the 680, so a little history there as well. That does give you a total of 2,304 CUDA cores in this single graphics card, uh, and then you also get 4,096 megabits of GDDR5 memory. That's two gigs per GPU, and you get access to some fancy NVIDIA stuff like TXAA, physics, SLI, uh, anything that you've read about possibly um, with the 600 or 700 series, as far as compatibility goes, um, you're going to find compatibility with that here as well. Down here we have some very, very small text on the left side uh, that's recommended system requirements. Just wanted to read over those really quickly. Four gigs of system, system memory is recommended. A motherboard with one free PCI Express slots and uh, the correct PCI Express chipset driver. That's just always good to have. Uh, Microsoft Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, or 8.1. And then a minimum 500 watt system power supply which actually seems on the low side to me, but uh, that's what ASUS says, so that's what it should be able to run on. I'd recommend getting a, a decent to high-end quality power supply if you are going to go with 500 watts, or give yourself a few hundred watts of headroom, and that'll make sure you have uh, room to improve to add things to your computer or to make sure that your power supply isn't running at max load all the time. Also make sure it's got a minimum 12-volt current rating of 24 amps. Apart from that, we have a flap right here, which provides access to stuff like a peekaboo window that you can kind of see right there. And then on the flap, we have some more stuff about the card itself. So ultimate performance, here's some 3D Mark 11 Extreme uh, performance comparisons. They're uh, stacking this up against the GTX Titan because probably the GTX Titan is a $1,000 graphics card, and this card costs less than that. Uh, but also the Titan being um, one of the flagship uh, GPUs from NVIDIA along with the 780 uh, Ti means that uh, this card performing that well indicates some, some pretty hefty performance out of it. Uh, apart from that, DirectCU 2 uh, is the cooling solution. I'm going to show you guys a closer look at that. It's a very nicely done uh, DigiPlus VRM and Super Alloy Power Chokes. Uh, this is the components we've seen used by ASUS for a lot of their motherboards as well as ROG series boards. Uh, and then you also get access to GPU tweak software, um, which they have recently improved, so you can actually do uh, online streaming with it now, which is pretty cool. And you can also use it to sort of take control of your graphics card to uh, do overclocking if that is your thing since this card is designed for overclocking as well. Let me just put this flat back down and we'll take a look at the back. So there's sort of an exploded view of the card. Uh, stable power delivery for the DigiPlus VRM, uh, that is something that they're really touting a lot right here. It's actually a 12-phase DigiPlus VRM. Reduces your power noise by 30%. It enhances the efficiency by 15%. They use Japanese black metal caps made by Nichikan and Super Alloy Power Chokes. Uh, and there's also some POS caps on the back of the card that I'm going to show you as well. But it's going to run 20% cooler. That's as compared to a GTX uh, 690, since the GTX 690 is kind of the closest comparison to this card, since they both use two GK104 104 GPUs. Although, again, bear in mind, these are the GK104s from the 760, not the GK104s from the um, 680, like the GTX 690 uses. Finally, uh, system specifications down here on the lower ed edge of the the box and uh, you, can, you guys can read over those if you want to. I'm probably going to be repeating them in just a moment. And that said, let's get a uh, closer look at the accessories. And inside the box we go. We have uh, plenty of nice closed cell phone padding to keep everything protected. The first item of interest that you get is tucked in right here. That is a ROG uh, magnet. 
which is kind of cool. I like that they've gone with the magnet for this. It's got uh, texture and depth to it, so um, it's going to look very nice on your system. And the fact that it is a magnet means that you can put it on your outside of your case, and then if you decide you don't like it, you can remove it or add it to another case, or maybe you get a new case in the future. But uh, kind of a nice little add-on there. Uh, here is a Molex. Wait, Molex? No, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Uh, this actually takes a couple six-pin PCI Express or PEG uh, PCI Express graphics power connectors and transfers it to a single 8-pin PCI Express graphics connector. So that will uh, help with your power supply compatibility if you're having any issues with that. There's the graphics card itself, of course. And then apart from that, uh, we have a nice add-on here, which is a uh, DVI to HDMI adapter. Since this card does not have any native HDMI uh, ports on the back, you can easily convert the digital signal from DVI over to HDMI, and you should have pretty much universal, universal compatibility with that for HDMI, up to the resolutions that are supported, of course, by HDMI. Uh, here is your Mars 760 driver and manual. Chances are you can go to the ASUS website or the NVIDIA website to download the latest drivers for this card, which will probably be more updated and better, um, but the manual is also on there if you wanted to take a look. Here's an ASUS speed setup guide, which is their sort of generic uh, uh, graphics card installation guide. And that's all for accessories. Here's the Mars 760 itself. I'm going to start off with a quick measurement here. The specs on the box will tell you 11 inches. However, I'm actually measuring a bit longer than 11 inches, so um, give yourself 11 and a quarter inches just to be sure, measuring from the bracket there, but uh, definitely a little bit longer than 11 inches. So depending on what case you might be using, uh, particularly if you're considering installing this in, say, a mini ITX system, because that, I think, is one of the possible solutions that people might be interested in this in. Since it is a single graphics card with a single PCI Express interface, uh, this might be a good solution for folks who are setting up a mini ITX system, want a bit more ho horsepower, but don't necessarily want to invest in, say, uh, a Titan, I suppose, or uh, a GTX 690. Uh, but apart from that, the uh, cooling solution, as you can see, is over there on the top. That's the DirectCU2. Here's a look at the back and the aluminum backplate. Uh, let me finish off with a few more specs about the GPUs themselves. Again, GK104s are located here and here, kind of at the center of these uh, little arrays of uh, screw, screws. Uh, apart from the uh, GPU being GK104, uh, again, each one has 1,152 CUDA cores for a total of 2,304. Uh, the core clocks on each GPU are 1,006 megahertz. Uh, NVIDIA has also an element called boost clock, which will automatically overclock the card, uh, which is listed at 1,072 megahertz. And then I have found that with all of the 600 series cards and 700 series cards, when you actually run them, under load that the boost clock often goes even higher than that. So this one, when I was testing it, was actually boosting up to 1,123.5 megahertz to be not too specific. And uh, it is, was able to maintain that since the card does have a very adequate cooling solution that keeps the temperatures down. Uh, as far as the uh, market that ASUS is looking to sell this card to, it's folks who are going for gameplay at about the 2560 by 1440 resolution. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's not suitable for 2560 by 1600 or 1920 by 1080. Um, in either of those situations, you should still be fine. I'm going to be testing it at 2560 by 1600 and 1920 by 1080, for example. Uh, but one thing I would not recommend is actually getting this if you're going to, going to be pushing towards a 4K resolution anytime soon, simply because the 2 gig buffer that is uh, supplied for each graphics uh, for each GPU, giving it 4 gigs total, is a little bit low for a 4K resolution. Um, for that, I would recommend looking more along the lines of, say, a GTX 780 or a 780 Ti. Uh, the final specs, uh, no, I should say memory. Uh, again, the four gigs you get, uh, they run at six gigabits per second. Uh, again, two gigs per GPU. That gives you a total memory bandwidth of 192 gigabytes per second. Uh, the card also features uh, 96 TMUs or texture memory units per GPU, as well as 32 ROPs or raster operations pipelines or rasters, rasterizers. Sometimes they're called, uh, but 32 per GPU uh, for that as well. One other element that I can't really show you right now because it's actually uh, on the circuit board and we're not doing a disassembly of the card right now, is that ASUS has also integrated a PLX bridge onto the card, which is something that you typically see more often used with motherboards to provide additional PCI Express lanes. But it's, it's a PLX PEX8747 PCI Express Gen 3 bridge it's integrated on the card, and that helps uh, to share the uh, bandwidth of the single PCI Express connection between the two GPUs. Okay, back to the more physical aspects of the card. Uh, the shroud right here 
is uh, pretty cool looking, I, I, might, I must say myself. Again, the black and red uh, ROG theme colors, uh, sort of maintaining that. Uh, the black part here actually has a soft touch, kind of rubberized finished, which, uh, which is just very nice. I'm just going to kind of touch it for a while there. Okay. Yeah, feels really nice, I can promise you guys. Uh, it's got a metal accent here in the form of sort of a matte finish uh, metal accent. I guess I can't think of better words to describe that with. ROG logo right there. And then we also have a Mars logo on the side. And the Mars logo will light up and sort of pulsate in a, in a very pleasing red hue um, back and forth, which is pretty cool. Uh, so that's kind of the uh, physical cooling solution aspects. Uh, we also have two fans right there. Um, these are special fans. They're actually uh, dust proof, which is also very nice, which means the housing in there uh, is enclosed so that the dust can't gather up and, and clog up over time. Uh, two aluminum fin arrays. Each one is discrete, so you can see those kind of sitting beneath each fan here and here, so one per GPU. Uh, and those are supplied, or basically those will draw heat away from the GPUs uh, from the bottom there. Then you can see the uh, copper heat pipes. So there's four over here and four more over here. Those actually go under and make direct contact with the GPU, hence the direct CU2 moniker, direct CU, direct copper. And uh, that is how it effectively gets the heat out into those fin arrays so it can be dispersed by the downward firing fans. And then the heat is uh, going to be pushed out the side since this does have an open solution. So do bear that in mind. Open solution cards typically have very good GPU cooling, but they can eject some warmer air into your case. So make sure that you have uh, plenty of airflow through the case just to make sure that you're pushing that out so that uh, things aren't getting too toasty in there. Uh, apart from that, there is another black frame that you can sort of see the edge of running along here. Uh, this is a support frame. Uh, it's a metal, and uh, basically that's uh, providing some extra rigidity and support to the GPU. I'm sorry, to the PCB, uh, as well as making sure that uh, if the card is plugged in and uh, in the typical configuration in a PCI slot, which would look kind of like that, that you're going to minimize the amount of uh, card droopage that you might see over time, since some of these heavier cards can tend to do that. Uh, but that extra support there provides a lot of, well, extra support. Uh, apart from that, we also have aluminum backplate, um, which again is providing some additional support, also providing a very nice brushed metal black look to the top of the card. Asus ROG logo is there as well, and again, since in most cases this is the uh, view of the card that you get, having that black uh, plate on the top again gives it a, a really nice finished look. The PCB, which you can see underneath, is also a flat black color. Again, quite pleasing, and uh, I typically like black PCBs because they blend in so nicely and having other colors can uh, be a bit of a distraction at times. Uh, for power delivery, we have actually a 12-phase digital uh, uh, digital VRM solution, uh, that's the uh, ASUS Digi Plus VRM. Again, reduces uh, power noise by 30%, uh, enhances your efficiency by 15%. Japanese black metal caps, you can see a few of those right there. Those are the capacitors from Nichicon uh, that you can see. Also, Super Alloy Power, or SAP chokes, also integrated as part of, part of the cooling solution, although, again, you probably can't really see them from here because they're being covered by the top of the fin array. And then one other element, which is kind of cool on the back here, um, is all of these little capacitors right here. These are POS caps, and uh, ASUS has integrated those onto the back of the board, uh, basically to provide uh, power at need for the GPUs, um, since particularly when you're overclocking, uh, having power available, and especially having power available very close to the GPUs themselves, rather than positioned further away on the PCB, uh, is very, very important. And uh, again, this card is designed as part of the ROG series to be very overclockable. Uh, and that just about wraps it up for the physical... Oh, wait, no, there's a couple things I've, I've nearly forgotten here. Uh, one is, of course, the, the PCI Express connection point right there. Can't forget that one. That's kind of the main connection to the rest of the computer. PCI Express Gen 3. Uh, I definitely recommend Gen 3 for this card since you do have two, two GPUs sharing all that bandwidth. Um, but uh, the, you can still run it on PCI Express Gen 2, so don't worry about that. You shouldn't see too much performance degradation since it's really just a bandwidth increase that you get from Gen 3. Speaking of the POS caps, I did, or I'm sorry, of the Super LA Power Chokes, there's one right there so that you can see SAP logo on it, um, just to give you guys a closer look since I was talking about it. Uh, we also have an SLI finger, which is up at this end, right there. So uh, you can, if you're interested, get two of these cards, string them together with an SLI bridge, and that would give you what is known as Quad SLI. And I always like to make that distinction. Quad SLI is two dual GPU cards together. Uh, that's as opposed to four-way SLI, which is four single GPU cards. And um, I just I just like to point that out to the folks over at PC Gamer 
and anyone else who might be watching this video. <laughs> it's really a minor distinction, but um, it, you know, it's, it's nice to be using the right terminology. OK, uh, apart from that, power. Power requirements, of course. We can't forget power. Down here at this end, again, uh, since this card has two GPUs, it needs lots of power. So uh, two 8-pin uh, PCI Express graphics or PEG connectors. Plug those in right there from your uh, power supply. And it also has a, a thing that ASUS has been doing for quite some time, which is kind of tucked in right above those, which is a couple LEDs that will be red if they're not plugged in or if they're not getting the right power, and green if they are plugged in and they are getting the right amount of power. And of course, we can't forget, well, we can forget, I just did, but uh, here are the video outs at the back of the card. I kind of like the configuration that the ASUS has gone with here. Uh, first off, you have three dual link DVI connection points. Um, I like dual link DVI because I have a monitor at home that only supports dual link DVI. And so maybe I'm a little bit biased, but uh, <laughs> apart from that, top one here is digital only, so bear that in mind. You cannot use that with a DVI to VGA adapter. Uh, the two on the bottom are uh, both, wait, no, 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 yes. No, I was correct. Sorry about that. Top one's digital only. Bottom two have analog connection points as well, so you can use those with adapters. And you can use any of those with that DVI to HDMI adapter that comes in the box if you have a monitor that takes an HDMI connection. You also have a mini display port over here, uh, which is cool because it's display port, which is also a very, very nice connection standard, which is also one of my favorites. Um, and uh, display port gives you the option, for instance, if you wanted to use this uh, with a display port 1.2 daisy chainer or a multi-stream hub, uh, you can actually connect just a single cable out of this to connect multiple monitors together, which is uh, also pretty cool. Uh, but one other thing I should mention is that you can support four monitors uh, out of the box, actually more than that if you're going to use that MST hub, uh, and you can uh, game on three of them, and you can use the fourth as a companion display for web browsing or chat or that sort of thing. Uh, next up, we're going to move on to some benchmarks. So uh, I was able to spend a little bit of time with this card, ran through some benchmarks. Uh, I'm using our test bed over there, the new TV test bed. So I uh, paired it with another ROG product, the uh, ASUS Rampage 4 Formula ROG motherboard, with the X79 chipset. And uh, that being said, let's just go ahead and jump in and take a look at some benchmarks. <laughs> Those are your benchmarks, and that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, we've been taking a closer look at the ASUS ROG series Mars GeForce GTX 760 featuring two of NVIDIA's GK104 GPUs. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed this video, then leave me a comment in the comment section below saying how much you liked this graphics card on a scale from 1 to ROG. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.